and it was just no one thought about it on Saturday night. You would go out to Ramallah from Jerusalem because there, there wasn't the Sabbath, there was more going on. Then came the Intifada in September 2000. Those short distances, because of the checkpoints, because of the danger, they became huge and they became chasms between the two people to see those connections that had begun to be made between Israelis and Palestinians, how they withered and how that fed the bitterness and fed the conflict. And that, to me, you know, that whole process of seeing these distances grow was really uh, horrifying to, to see. And at the same, perhaps as horrifying as the violence, because what happened is that it did begin as a war of stones, but there was gunfire on the first day, and it quickly became more and more violent. And it was a situation in which there was no easily defined front line. There was certainly not a fixed front line. And I think th those things, the lack of a front line and the lack of boundaries about how people would treat one another, you know, those uh, f to me were the defining moments of that conflict and things that I've seen replicated in other conflicts. I mean, for example, in Iraq, once the Americans came in, they began to put up the same kind of barriers, physical barriers that, that, we, that I saw building, being built up in Ramallah, you know, and those kind of things. So to see this sort of shifting of front, of, uh, front lines, the inability to decide what is safe and what is not safe, that I think is a hallmark of conflicts uh, today. And I think that's why they're more dangerous.